what's up YouTube today's video we are changing out the front axle universal joint now you'll notice once I start tearing into it that the front hub assembly is also new and that's because I was getting some really weird noises up front a little bit of grinding occasional popping but you know when I changed out the front hub bearing I thought hey it's all good you no know, it, it quieted a lot of things down but when I was in there you know, I thought, you know, I'm going to come back a little bit later change out that universal joint. I didn't change it the day I had the bearing because I didn't have one in my hands at that moment. And so I changed it out the following weekend. Which works out for your advantage because you get two great educational videos. Now, if you missed that wheel bearing video, that could mean that you haven't subscribed. Now, if you haven't subscribed, you really should. Just hit that subscribe button down below. It's all good. Because whenever you subscribe, you'll be notified that I release these great educational videos. And you may learn something or not. I don't know. You at least be educational some form of fashion. Come on. At least hit that subscribe for me. So let's just not sit here with a whole bunch of ramblings. So let's just get on with the video, show you guys how to change out that front universal joint. Ready? Let's do it. You get your front axle jack to high enough that when you put the jack stand under the spring plate here, that your axle's tilted at an angle like this. You know, it's kind of, your passenger side is kind of running uphill. And the reason I do that is whenever I take out the CAD cover so I can access that collar. To pull out my axle there's gonna be some oil inside that CED right there the axle grease and stuff so what it does it helps minimize the grease loss whenever you pull the CD, CAD cover off and what's running inside the axle tube it helps minimize a lot of your losses so now that I've got that jacked up jack stands for safety back here in the back we got right here and right here 10 millimeter get your caliper off but once your caliper comes off just take your brake rotor and just slides right off make sure you got a good grip on it and don't drop it now with the rotor off and out of the way what we're going to do next is this cotter pin we're going to straighten this out here and then we'll pull the cotter pin out of there you have to get your pin out take it all I don't know what you call the thing, a little castellated lock nut looking contraption. And what we're going to do is zip that sucker out of there. I'm going to put my impact on it because the baby's right there pretty doggone tight. And the socket of choice for this big old hub nut here is 36 millimeter. So once you get that nut out there, you can stick your fingers and try to pull that washer out. You might get lucky to snag it or you can hang it the edge up with the screwdriver. But if you get really lucky and your axle shaft's not seized to your hub bearing here, take push in on that there, then pull out on it and pull it out just enough that you still can't get your fingers in there to get it. Come on. Uh, oh, this failed to dig it out with a screwdriver. Shoot. Dang it. Probably doesn't help much if I could use two hands and another screwdriver, but the other hand is occupied with the camera. Come on, come on, you can do it. Alright, I'll put the camera down getting that out of there. I can only torment myself so long. Okay, let's get the bolts out to hold the hub assembly in. You got three 13 millimeter 12 point. One here, one there, and one right there. Get them out. Okay, got the bolts out to hold the hub assembly in. And this part right here can be either a pain to tell or it can be pretty easy. It just depends on how long it's been in there. This hub assembly has not been in there very long. And I think I mentioned even in the video of when I changed this bearing assembly that I was going to change out the U-joint coming pretty soon. So that's what I'm obviously I'm changing the U-joint now. So this shouldn't be too awfully bad coming out. If it is, I'm going to put a link like down in the description or pop up here somewhere that to the video of, of changing out this hub assembly. So you guys can see what I did to get this thing out there. But since I changed this out not long ago, I cleaned the spindle and put some uh, notes right here. It's grease that keeps things from seizing up so it shouldn't be too hard to bring this thing out 
Now look at that, see? No big deal. Because it hasn't been in there very long. So what I'm going to do is push my axle back in that way because I don't want to pull my axle just yet. Because i got to take the CAD off, central axle disconnect. And I've got there's a collar inside there that you got to deal with. So I'm going to put the camera down, go ahead and pull that off. Okay, let's remove this the central <clears throat> let's remove the central axle disconnect. And those of you who are still running all the factory components, you're gonna have vacuum lines right here. Be sure not to get them mixed up as to which way. You know, one goes here, one goes there, don't get them mixed up. And you're gonna have a wire on the end of this right here. That wire is to tell it that hey, your four wheel drive is engaged or it's disengaged. Uh my crab didn't work with the day I got the Jeep, so I modified it with a cable and it worked like that for a long time. Then the cable broke. Not the cable, but the fork inside here broke that moves the uh, collar in here. So then I locked it in full time, and I haven't looked back since. So what you're going to see inside this cover is going to maybe different from what you see on any of the other ones. And I'll explain once I get there. But you got uh, four bolts. It's supposed to be one right there, but it's broke. One, two, three, four, 11 millimeter. Get them out. Now I've got the CAD mechanism off. There's why I can't pull my axle. We got a hose clamp there and a hose clamp there. I slid the collar over to engage both pieces of the axle because YJs and some of the XJs have a two-piece axle system for the people who don't know. I slid the collar over, hose clamp here and a hose clamp there, keeps the collar engaged full time. And some people take their CAD fork or they'll flip it around the other way and bolt it back in. That works, but my fork, my original fork broke. So therefore, it's not an option for me. But the hose clamps, if you take and put two in there, put one up top and one on bottom, that does a balancing right there. That's like it counterbalances um, the system there or whatever you'll call it. So that has been working really well for me for at least two years or more. So I'm gonna take those two clamps out, then I'll be able to slide my axle out. Looky everyone. Whenever you got oil here and you got oil there, in between transmission, in between block, what does that mean? <sighs> Rear main seal leaking. If it's always something, that's all right. I'm just gonna deal with the taking mother engine built. There's a short side of the two-piece drive shaft on Wranglers and XJs on the passenger side. Now, right there is where the CED system hooks into, and what we got. Okay, just give you guys a quick rundown. See that hole right there at the end of it? That means something to you. So I'll explain it. I'll show you what that does here in just a moment. So you got the hole there. And here's a little collar I was showing you guys up, up inside the uh, differential. This slides on this right here. Okay. Whenever you, if you've got all the parts inside yours like I don't, there's a fork rise on this right here. Normally it kind of stays back on the shaft right here and it spins from the side of that fork. So whenever you go lock in your differential, lock in four-wheel drive, this slides over about halfway. These splines right here, about halfway, and it locks the shaft coming from your differential, which I'll show you here in a minute. The shaft coming from your differential and this uh, second piece of your axle shaft. This collar locks all that together. Then you've got a one-piece axle, so to speak. Honestly, the CAD system is not a bad setup. It really isn't. Some people are going to totally diss me for saying that, but hey, have at it. The downside to the CAD system or the CAD central axle disconnect is that doggone vacuum pod that actuates the same back and forth because they're notorious for going out. I mean, if you get, um, you know, if it gets a leak, or if you get oil beside of it, the diaphragm rots out, uh, out wheeling too much, snatch a. Uh, Alcohol to snatch a vacuum line off. There's so many different things that can go wrong with that CAD system that that is why they get a bad rap. But for the most part, they're a pretty stout setup, and you can run a full locker in the front axle and still have your CAD, be it vacuum actuated or cable actuated, and have this still functional. And if you had a full locker up front, all you had to do is this out of the way, not locking in your axles here, and this side will free spool. And the rest of the, the rest of the uh, drivetrain, the rest of the uh, 
axles and differentials and stuff will just do their thing and they'll drive like normal but when this right here engages in then you're engaging the two-piece axle shaft and your full locker bit uh you can be a spartan locker or you can be a spooled whatever and um then it becomes a one-piece axle shaft and that's when you know you get a true four-wheel drive system so let's go back under the jeep here and i'll show you how this hole right here what it means to you and you'll see how this right here engages the splines okay remember the hole i showed you at the end of the axle well when it comes through the axle tube here that hole in the end of the short piece down there goes over top of this right here which aligns your splines and so whatever you lock in the CAD and that fork that's supposed to be in here slides over and engages this set of splines and this set of splines when the axle is, enga when the axle is inside here. It engages those two sets of splines which therefore makes you a one piece axle in a way, for lack of a better way of saying it I guess. But when it engages the two uh, two piece axles and makes it one, then at that point there's an axle, that axle to here that's running through that tube into your differential. It spins this axle, therefore spinning that axle, and there you go, you got four wheel drive. I mean, I know that's a really lousy explanation, but without actually tearing my differential part or explaining it to you, I ain't doing it. That's a, that's a gig for another day. But I just want to give you guys a kind of a quick rundown as to what the CED does. Like I said, it's not really a bad setup. It's that vacuum pod right there that gives it a bad rap. And I don't have the fork here. Those forks break. And then, therefore, you can't lock in your four-wheel drive. But overall, I mean, it's not a bad setup. The, the, the dirt backing pod. Okay, someone's got a comment and saying, hey, you should put a one-piece axle shafts in. You should upgrade to a Dana 44. You should upgrade this. You should upgrade that. Yes, 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 I get all that. Um, that's what my other project rig is going to be for, is doing all those cool upgrades. But I gear my videos on the level of not everyone has tons of money to put high dollar parts in. Not everyone has the skills to do these high, you know, these conversion setups and stuff. So I try to take care, I try to gear my videos to where I'm actually helping people with their stock rigs, where they can fix them up and feel, like, and feel pride in doing the job themselves, okay? So there will come a time whenever you see me doing the hardcore modding stuff, and that's going to be on my other rig. But for right now, I'm showing you guys the ones who need the help. How to fix your stock rig and how to keep it rolling because hey come on jeeps are not meant to be out having fun so you can leave your comments down below that's all cool i'm cool with that i really encourage actually comments to help people learn and educate them but keep them nice and don't be dissing people because we're running stock parts okay cool cool okay it's time to change out this u-joint now each downside each cross right here for the cup is right there i'm hanging my screwdriver there is the end of the little c-clip and the c-clips look like this obviously this is from the new u-joint little c-clips look like this and what they do is they prevent the u-joint from walking back and forth with inside the yoke and the axle shaft okay what you gotta do is get them things out of there and sometimes you get lucky at hanging into your screwdriver like this and walk them out of course this one ain't gonna be one of the easy ones but otherwise you get your screwdriver hanging on the edge of it tap it with a uh, hammer tap your screwdriver with a hammer and it'll break it loose because oftentimes from all the crud and rust throughout the times of throughout the years those things kind of uh, I ain't say so much as seized they just get crudded up and they just don't like to come out see you really can't see the edge of that one Right there, you can see the edge of that one. And right there's the edge of that one. So, now most times, like I said, you get a screwdriver, dang on it. Stay. Most times you get a screwdriver wedge up in there, like this right here, and keep pushing back on the end of that clip, and it'll eventually free them up. Or sometimes just take a hammer time and just tap them and work them out. This huge joint right here, I mean, it's not. The only thing I feel bad about it is like right here, it's limited movement and it, it's, it's seized, which means it's still bad. But it didn't, like, oftentimes when a U-joint goes bad, the bearings inside the cup right here go, go bad and the U-joint is allowed to move, you know, onto the cross itself. The cups will move on the cross before it makes the whole axle yoke and all that stuff move around. This one is just flat out seized up. 
which is kind of weird. But nonetheless, it needs to be changed. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how I got that clip up and ready to pull out using my press as a vice at the moment. Hey, it works. You still want to get crazy by pushing and pulling because, I mean, that is on a radius right there. So, But it works for the what I'm doing here. So anyway, screwdriver tip, like I told you a moment ago, hook on that lip, pull up on it, which jacks it up out of that groove right there. Then once I got it up out of that groove, I held it in place, obviously with two hands, because I'm holding the camera now. But pushed that clip up. Other, other screwdriver brought it in from the back side back here through the, drive, the axle shaft to hold it up. Now at this point, what I can do is just keep prying it up. It'll pop that clip out of there. Once you get one clip worked out, it's a lot easier from that point on because then you can press the U-joint down this way which will loosen that clip up here and then you're able to get that cross out of the out of the uh, spline part then it makes it's right here easier to get into also so I'm gonna pop that clip out okay look before I lose my grip on this clip right here I'm gonna put the camera down and use both screwdrivers okay I recovered so what I did I took the other screwdriver put it on the end of that right there and pushed it that way because I was about to lose the grip the screwdriver had on it but when I pushed it that way I took this screwdriver and see how the blades positioned inside it like that when I turn it it worked that clip upward so I turn the screwdriver set pulls that clip up like that you just turn go around it and walk it out like that then once you get to a certain point I'm sorry I'm trying to see what the camera sees and I'm not sure what's going on here Oh, there it is. Now that I go on top of that, turn it again, it takes that clip on out of there. Ta-da, there's one out. Now at this point, to make life easy on myself, well first I'm gonna try to go ahead and take this side out just like that. If it's cooperative, great. If not, what I'll have to do is take this out of the press, press this U-joint cross part here, push it down that way which will release that uh, clip right there. It'll take the pressure off and make it easier for me to get to. So, I'm going to see if I get lucky and push that one out. So, I'll be back. But you've seen how I did that one. You do the rest of them the same way. There are times I really should leave the camera in place while I'm doing some of this stuff. And this is one of those times. Those of you out there who have changed U-joints, you know that whole feeling whenever you're cranking on it, you're cranking on it, you're cranking on it, you put a ton of pressure on it, you start getting nervous because the U-joint's not wanting to turn loose. You're like, dang, I don't want to break the ears, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. So you're like, okay, what I've done, I set it up. The socket here is just big enough that the U-joint caps will go inside the socket. And so whenever I put the pressure up here and I kept cranking I'm like I mean I got a 12 ton jack on this thing and I'm kind of putting some pressure on the handle which you know that's putting a ton of pressure here all of a sudden you know I'm like uh, you know this is making me nervous so I tap it with a hammer if they can break in some of that um, rust corrosion and stuff loose yeah that sucker popped and I thought for sure I had shrapnel flying everywhere but alas we did not all is good so now I can get that right there because it did not want to move. It is like rusty, crusty up inside that thing. So now I can get that out and get the rest of the U-joint apart. Okay, those of you who have never changed out a U-joint before, this is what I mean by this socket being just big enough for this cap. Now here's what happens. I'm pressing, I got the press up here, pushing down on the U-joint. It's in the middle of the U-joint cap here. All the pressure is on the U-joint pushing down. Now I can't have pressure, I cannot have pressure here on the U-joint cap here because then all it does is kind of like in a way squeezes the U-joint. It doesn't push out the U-joint. You want no pressure on the cap, but you want the pressure to be on the ears here, okay? So that's where the socket comes into play. This U-joint cap here will go inside here, see? So whenever you're pressing here on the U-joint cap, and the U-joint's getting pushed down, all that applied pressure being pushed in the center of the cap here, this socket, the way it's resting, is resting on the ear, on the ear of the, where the U-joint goes through, U-joint cap. That applies all the pressure here, no pressure on this, 
which allows that cap in the U-joint to come downward. So that's what works. Now some people's gonna say, hey, I don't have a press. And that's okay, you, you don't need a press, really. Uh, you can do this with hammers. You can do this with a vise. I tell you what, check down in the description below and I'll link up some videos as to where I um, did, I've, I've changed U-joints in different methods and I'll link those videos up down below so you can see the different methods of doing it. I've done it with a hammer many, many, many times. So it's not that bad. So let's get this baby apart. I tell you what, let's do a quick demonstration if you were having to do this with a hammer. Even though I've got it knocked already mostly out. This is where this socket here is bigger than that cap right there. See how it goes inside the cap. Then you would lay your drive shaft, axle shaft, whatever on the ground. You need another socket here that is smaller than the diameter of that cap right here. Because that's going to go down inside there as you drive it with a hammer. So what you do is you get them centered up like that, take your hammer, and beat it through. And I moved it down some. Which takes that cap here and drives it out. See? Well, I can smack that a little bit more. It'd be about out there. There he goes. See? Now we got to get that ring off right here. We should be, uh, obviously, we, it's easy to get to now, so we got to get that clip off right here. Okay, now that we're ready to take this clip right here off, there's a little trick, because sometimes even getting here with the screwdriver, it's like, dang it, dang it, it won't move, I've got the bad angle on it, whatever the case may be, and you're just really getting frustrated. Let me show you a little trick. If the shaft would move over, if it don't, it's fine too. Take your channel locks, okay? Hook that edge of here okay right on the end of that clip here grip it just lightly enough that whenever you turn the channel locks you actually turn that whole ring now you've got that edge in position to where you can take a screwdriver here on this end here on that end and push that clip right off so sweet and easy there's a little easy trick for you Okay, I'm taking the press, I'm pressing the U-joint back through the other way because what I want to do is press that cap out the bottom of this ear here. Okay, what I'm doing, I'm taking the press, pushing that cross back down, pushing the other cup out the bottom here, okay, and pushing it into this socket. But notice I want to reposition my press because right there I'm about to hit on that ear. So I'm going to reposition the press just a little bit. And again, if you don't have a press, you can do this stuff with hammers or, or even a vise if you need. But I just like using my press because it's more controlled and I can you know, really pay attention to what's going on with everything. Okay, once you get that cap pushed through, take your chin locks, twist and pull most of the time. Ah, there he goes. And then all your needle bearings fall out. Now, old u-joint needle bearings fall out not a problem new u-joint bearings fall out you got a problem you don't want this on the new one okay so get all these needle bearings out of the way put them inside the cap so they're not laying all over the driveway so whatever you, we're putting the new one in you really want to be careful that this does not happen because this is a bad thing for your new u-joint Typically, that don't happen anyway. So now we just take a cross and we just work with it till we find that sweet spot to where it comes out of there. Probably what I'm going to have to do is apparently is these cups right here, plastic cups. Do -do 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 -do. Because there's just enough in the weight that's not allowing anything to come out of there. There it goes. Then we got to press that through there.
because you'll be like, it won't come out. And that darn thing right there is what's holding it. Nice if we get lucky enough because that cat cross has got to go inside that deep enough. Then it tilts back out. Then burn it. Get out of there. There he goes. I haven't having a real time seeing what the camera sees because it's the sun glare. But there's that. That's done. Now we got to do get this U joint out of the drive shaft. Same old procedure. Okay, I'll set the I set the camera up this time. See if we get any excitement. Okay, just to point out what I've got going on here, on the bottom here, here, I have the ring removed. Here's the ring, okay? I have that one removed, so what's gonna happen is I'm pressing down here, this ring is still in place because I have to push that ring away from that ear. So when I push it down, this thing you remember, it's probably the Packer U-joint. It's probably rusted up inside there and seized and all kinds of other fancy words. So I'm gonna keep putting pressure on it with the jack and what's gonna happen, it'll probably pop like crazy like they normally do. So but what makes me nervous about doing this, I have seen ears crack. Not often, but I've seen it happen. And I really don't feel like going to chase another drive shaft. I mean, I can pull one out of Project Rust Bucket, but I'd really rather not. So what we're gonna keep doing is put pressure on the hydraulics here. And this is why I like using the um, hydraulic presses because I can control the pressure and versus a hammer sometimes when it's seized up in there using a hammer or a vice it's a total pain in the butt to get it done but using the uh, using the uh, daggone press I'll get it out in a minute I can control the pressure even though it makes me nervous as hell because I'm always scared of popping an ear but not likely but I've seen it happen here we go I've got quite a bit of pressure on it. Okay, I can see a separation right here. That U joint is starting to slide now, finally. And there's what I'm talking about. That's the excitement that I was telling you about. You just keep pressing it. You said, oh, it's going to go smooth and easy because i seen separation up here from that cap coming down. And I thought, okay, it's going to be one of those that's going to slide out real nice and easy. Then all of a sudden, boom, it turns loose on you. But that's why I'm saying that'll make you like really wonder. Then all of a sudden it pops. And you're like, oh, crap, that'll break something. Let's see what the camera sees. Take that off, see if we've got our cap coming through. Pull that cap off. Now we can get this right here. There. And there I turned it around. And now, actually I can just about, I've got some gap up top here. Just maybe I can hang the screwdriver in under it. Stab my hand here. Stick on it. Get out of there. Okay, then in that case, you get right here. What I'm going to do is take the palm of my hand right here around the end of the screwdriver and pop it, it should knock that thing right off there. And there it is. Ta-da! And that clips off. Now, just like when we was doing the uh, spline side, we gotta press this back through this way and get that ear coming out this way. Cool, cool. All right, everyone, I kinda ran into something here that I'd never seen before. Okay, now I showed you earlier how you press that cross out, then you press it back the other way to get the other bearing cap off. 
this bearing cap was seized to the cross. So whenever I tried turning, it, it was turning the whole cross. I put pipe wrenches on it, I put all kinds of crap on it to try to pull this sucker off. It would not move, okay? So what I ended up doing, okay, this right here is not, let me get the one that I set up. Oh, here we go with the bearings again. So what I ended up doing, because here's, see how rusty that is inside there? It was seized to this cross, but bearings was inside there. So what I ended up doing is putting the snap ring back on, pushed it all the way through out this side, pushed the snap ring back on, then took the cross, pushed it back this way, pressed it back this way, and it popped it loose from the cap. So just in case you guys ever run into that little scenario, that's what you do to get around that. It wasn't no fun because I had pipe wrench and everything on that thing trying to make it turn and break loose. But I put that snap ring back on, they pressed the cross down this way to push it out of the cap and it popped right loose. Okay, now it's time to put the new one in and this is the time you want to start paying attention and being careful, okay? Pull your caps off. Very slow, very easily because you got those needle bearings that you see falling out of the old ones. Pull them out. Slow and easy, set them down because see how they're lined up in there? I've had them fall out before that you can put them back in but I'd really rather not so also remember look that seal came off of this now if you remember when I was pulling the old one out that seal was binding it wouldn't allow it to come out of the, uh, the saddles of the axle shaft and the spline piece so easily 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 wedge your screwdriver up inside there and just pry back on it you can walk it out don't gouge it don't get forceful with it and just walk around it once you get the screwdriver west in there just walk around it little by little don't force it don't bend it because then it's not going to seal properly see there it is now get all the rest of them off like that. And like I said, be very careful. When you take this cap, this plastic seal, put it back on top of your bearing cap. Okay? Like that. Now let's go ahead and get the rest of them off. Okay, let's start putting it back together. Now this U joint here has no grease fittings in them. And they don't have them in the end caps either. So you don't really have to worry about which way you orient the U joint. I'm just picky like that. But you tuck it inside there, and remember you gotta take those rings off so it'll fit down inside that cross. Then tucks it in like that. Then leave it sticking up. Because what you want to do is leave it sticking up like that. You can take your cup, your bearing cups, tilt it to the side. You want that shaft to go through and hold those bearings in place. Then we'll press that cup in right there. Now remember when I was pressing them out? Well, I'm gonna press this in, but I'm gonna use the press, obviously, and so it's just opposite of putting them in, so there's no need to make it a whole bunch of camera time for this. So I'm gonna press that cap in real quick. See what, I'm going old school now. Because oftentimes putting in the new stuff is way easier than taking out the old. So you see again, my cross here, we got this uh, bigger socket that the cross is gonna go down side here. Take the socket, uh, which way is the camera going? There it is. Take this because it's smaller it'll go inside that ear set it right there and it don't take a whole lot don't get all he-man is smacking the crap out of it because what we're after is drive it through just enough that this is coming through now we're going to get us another cap right back we got us another bearing cap here Again, we got this post sticking through far enough. I need to turn my viewfinder. I can't see what the heck's going on. Okay, this is sticking through far enough. Now your bearings up in here, that will stick through enough to support your needle bearings as you put this in. It's very important. You don't want those bearings to come out of there or get knocked out of line because they are a pain. Well, they're not really a pain. They're just aggravating. Okay, now you got that in place. We don't need this right here right now because we're not going to push that all the way through quite at all. So set that in place here.
Okay, now that I've hammered that part of that through, now remember we got our clips that goes inside those grooves. As it stands right now, they're still just a little bit separated. So again, take my little socket, the one that's bigger than the caps, put it in line right here. You want to knock this through some. And let's see. Right there, because you can see the grooves now. So what I can do now at this point, put my uh, clip in right here. Then I can push this one back through and put the clip in on that one. And the word that I'll leave my clips. Okay, here's our C-clips. Now pay attention which way you put them in because you can't put them around like this because you've got a lip right here that's going to interfere with the ends of these. So you just come straight in on top. And sometimes you can push them in if they don't bite the snot out of you. Now, it's pushed in, but what you want to do from there is get your screwdriver, get right on the end of that clip, and just kind of give it a love tap to seat it. There we go. Then you see, I've got that right there seated in. Now at this point, this cannot go back further anymore out of that ear. So now I've got to press this one downward so I can get my ring, my ring in that one. A little bit more. Okay, once you get one ring in, you press it down further enough, the next ring right here, it'll snap in just like the other one did. So now we're gonna put our other, we got to get our spline shaft, get it set in place, and put our other caps in. Okay, then we take this, take the through there. It's gotta go through just right. Which way is it gonna go? Remember the fancy contortionist moves we used to take it off with? Well, that's how you put it right back on. Now again, you want this post sticking up further enough? Bearing cap. Gently, because don't knock your bearings out of whack. That's there. Now, can't, at this point, we'll take, put all my stuff in the way. Once you get that seated, be sure to keep the pressure to where you got that uh, post going up inside the bearing. Oh, it's biting me. Look, my thumb's hung between it. Don't do that. That hurts. There. Tap it in. Again, I'm, I'm holding the pressure to where I keep that up inside the bearing, okay? Okay. Okay. You better watch South Park. Then we set that there. Tilt it so it's about perpendicular. Again, I'm hold, kind of pulling up on this shaft. Ouch! It bit me again. Drive that through because remember we got to push it through enough to put the other cap on. And what I was doing on the back side here, I had my fingers hanging up here, right there, pulling upward, keeping the bearings that shaft uh, of the cross pressed up inside the bearing so I don't knock my bearing needle, needle bearings out of the whack. So now we got this sticking out. Good Lord, I'll lose my head when it attached. There's this. Put that one in place. Again, we're going to sit the shaft down here. Y'all didn't see none of that. There we go.
Do 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 do. That feels so much better than it did. I can almost put my rings in. I think I got lucky. Let's check and find out. Another little, pro, uh, a little uh, tech tip. Don't rip a big hole in your bag. Just get your rings out because these things fall out and they just like tend to crawl everywhere except where you need them. Each time you get one out, grab hold of your ring, push a hole through that, work it out. Therefore, you got no great big huge holes. It's easier to find a white, uh, white piece of plastic laying around than it is these things right here, especially if you're doing it in the dirt or in the grass. So now we're going to take, tilt this back, see if we get lucky enough to snap these in. Darn going close. Ah, yes. Set that on top of that. Hammer time. You don't want to get crazy, just tap it. Because you just, more than anything, you just want to make sure it seats. Now we take and turn the shaft around. Bend it back this way. And again, are we going to get lucky? Or do I got to press that back? Poke your hole, work your ring out so you don't lose the other ones, which I'm empty now, so it's okay. Okay, this ain't gonna quite make it, so I gotta take this cap right here. It's gotta go that way. I gotta press it down just a little bit or hammer it down to give me just enough room to put that ring in. So let's see if we can make that happen. Almost. Oh, so not going close. And, uh, oh gosh. I know some of y'all out there said, dummy, you gotta press, won't you use that? <laughs> Here we go. Let me see what all the rings are seated now. We can put the shaft back in plug back in the Jeep. That feels so much better. Now when you put your uh, this piece of the drive shaft back in, this place right here, if you see, look really close, see those lines? There's an oil seal up inside the uh, right inside the CAD area, the, the central axle disconnect where all that uh, collar spline stuff comes in. There's a seal right there. So whenever you feed the axle back through, don't get all crazy and he-man is shoving it through really real hard. Guide it through, you'll feel the, you'll feel this bump against the end of the seal, okay? So you just kind of work with it till you feel it center, then slide it in slow. So therefore you don't knock that seal out of place and damage it. But it's important, don't damage the seal. So go through. Now I can't put it all the way in because I still got da -da, this out. But you want to feed it through until uh, Yep, this through. That 
Actually, it's all, all the way in, so I need to back it out. Y'all thinking, I can't see what you see. You're right, you can. Come on. Let me show you what's up. Uh. Okay, see the axle right there? When I slide it through, it lines up on the end of that. So that's how the CAD works. Except I don't have the collar on right now. So we're going to pull that back off. Or pull it back a little bit. There, it's just resting on the seal. Here's our collar. Uh, slide that up in there. And what you want to do is rotate it. Keep working, positioning it. There it goes. Until... It goes up on to the drive side of the axle. And in my case, where I'm running these hose clamps to keep that locked in place, uh, probably just do it like I did originally. Go ahead and push, and maybe I can pull this off. What I did originally, I didn't pull the axle out when I put these in. I just unscrewed the clamp to the point to where I could wrap it around the axle. So I'll put that one in. Until it, that one's hanging down. Now note the way I'm going to put them in, okay? Now I want them pushed in just enough that I can hang that clamp. I don't know if I'm doing this the hard way or the easy way, but I do know that the other way I can just simply unscrew the clamps all the way. Because actually this ain't factory Chrysler parts as you can well tell. AMC, Jeep, what the hell, camera. Okay, I need to back it up just a little bit. I'll back the axle up just a little bit. Get in there. Okay, but note, the screwdriver end is up top. The screwdriver end on this one's on bottom. Both of them facing outward, so I can reach them with, um, reach them with the screwdriver once at a time. Okay, I think I've got it. Let's see it in. I bet y'all wondering how did he do that? I got one hand on the camera and the other hand's holding the clamp. Hit. I use my leg to push it in. And that time I took my foot and kicked the rest of it in. So there we go. Now for what my application here is, I've got this right here in place. Because if I turn the axle now, it turns the differential and all that because the collar is, has the axle ends locked in. So know what I got to do because the way I've got this set up, I got to turn this clamp upward so I can reach it with the screwdriver, tighten that clamp up, then I get to the bottom one, tighten it up. So obviously I'm out of fingers and hands, so I'm gonna, if you guys understand what I've got going on here, and I'm going to do that real quick. Now I've got my clamp set up at 180 degrees out, and um, maybe it's just me being nuts or whatever, but I did that for the sake of balance, I guess, to be sure it doesn't go out of balance, because you got a worm, a worm screw up here and a worm screw down there, kind of, you know, creating a, a balanced situation. Notice my, I've got just a little, little tiny bit of side movement, because what I don't want is it pressing that way too hard, but I don't want too much slop in it that it'll wobbling around because I want max, maximum engagement all the time to keep from stripping anything out which is not going to anyway very unlikely but what I don't want is it pressed against the casing over here too hard so I'm, I'm not going to put my CAD cover back on right yet because once I get the axle bearing the uh, hub bearing if they bolted back in it may pull my axle that way a little bit and I may have to adjust my clamps a little bit so once I get everything seated and put in place we'll come back to this I'll readjust my clamps and I'll show you how much um, side play I have in this that makes me feel comfortable. Like I said, I've run this for well over two, two and a half years, and it's been flawless. Alrighty, let's put the hub bearing back in. Take your grease gun, and what you want to do is get a little grease here on your finger, right around the splines. And what this is going to do for you in the event later on, if you need to take that bearing and all that stuff off, 
it's going to put a good film of grease in it to keep all the junk, you know, oil, I mean, not oil, but uh, water, dirt, whatever. It's going to lessen the chance of it getting inside those splines and seizing up your bearing and making it an absolute pain in the tail to come out of. Because I pulled front wheel drive bearings before that were seized on. <laughs> People, no fun. No fun. No way for them. Alright, now, your spindle. Put a slight little coat around there for the exact same reason. Somebody's got a crop truck and fired up. Right through here. I've still got my Honda Shadow 750. I love that bike. But sometimes I miss my, my Jixxer. Crop rockets are a crap load of fun to ride, I'm telling you. Somebody could say, your ball joints are shot. No, they're not. They're pretty solid, actually. The boots are shot. But don't worry, I'm going to rebuild the front end eventually. Or rebuild the one-out project uh, rust bucket and do some swapping. Do -do 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 that was dumb. And you want this lined up about like that because you got your holes here, here, and here, and here. And that'll kind of sort of stay uh, in the bearing. Get your splines lined up. Then what you'll have to do is probably grab your hub, rotate it, and push because you got those holes that your bolts ran through the spindle. It's got to line up. So, with that being said, got one bolt here. So the camera sees some back up so you guys will see. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my top bolt, feed it through here, which should run through my dust plate. Burn it back up a little bit. <clears throat> There's that. Oh my finger's in the way. Now, in the event, you're, in, I'll put a link down below to when I change this bearing out. Obviously, it's kind of new. Very new, actually. Uh, where's my socket wrench? Whenever you're putting the new one in, they go in like very tight. So you got press, you got to turn like half turn here, half turn here, half turn here, and work your way in the circle on the on the bolts back here. What it does is it presses that bearing up inside the spindle. Because if you get all froggy and start cranking on it, you can break the ears off your hub bearing here. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get that bolt started because I've got the bolt right here. I'm ratcheting it in this way. I'm pulling the bolt this way, pushing the bearing this, pushing the bearing this way. There she goes. Get that one started. Hold this. That was about to come through. Take this one. Right there it is. Oh, you guys may be able to see that one. That one just coming through. And take the ratchet. Okay, like I said, if this is a situation where it's the first time you had that this hub off and you're just pushing it back in, it's going in very tight. You run the bolts in until they just make contact with the back of the spindle. Okay, it's not touching the spindle yet. Okay, it's contact with the spindle, so I'm not going to crank down on tighten it yet. This one's not touching the spindle, so I'm going to tighten it till it is touching the spindle. Let me show you guys what I mean. Get up there. Okay, see if the camera picks it up. See the gap right here? 
that's what I mean. The back of the bolt is not touching the spindle. So we'll tighten it up until it's just touching. It just starts touching the spindle. And whenever you put, see how my fingers are put positioned. Positioned. I'm not putting much pressure on it. I can't like this. Okay. And what that's going to prevent me from doing is cranking down on it too tight. And these ears on the unit bearing or the hub bearing is being pressed up inside the spindle. So now what we got to do is since all three making contact, half turn, come up here on this one. Uh, okay, there you go. It just got tight, so about a half turn. Come over on the third one. Uh, let's the door. Let's the door. There you go. There it is. And put this in about a half turn. Okay. Well, actually, that turn is kind of snug. But this bearing's new. And I've already cleaned the spindle assembly and everything. So, again, where well, this has already been out, it hadn't been too awfully long ago. All this stuff's clean. It's no crud interference, so it's going pretty smooth for me now. So, now I'm going to go around, snug these down good. Then we'll put our hub here in. Then we'll get to the torquing of it. Okay, I've got these right here that's a little past snug, but I haven't torqued them down yet. Put your washer on. Actually got me a new uh, axle nut. Coffee. Okay, I've got the three bolts that holds the uh, bearing assembly. I've got those, you know, good hard snug going on with those. Put your washer back on. I got me a new nut for the axle. This is about six bucks. They're not too expensive. And bump that in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snug this up good. Because the whole axle is going to want to turn because if you look real close when I turn this watch about right there see the end of my finger watch this I turn this turns the drive shaft why is that because that tire over there is on the ground well if it were a pause unit that wouldn't happen yep I totally told myself I'm still running open diffs so this has got to be torqued down. It's going to be hard to torque that down with an open differential. So I'll show you guys a little trick. This really is tight. I, mean, I think it's like 175 foot pounds. So I'll be back with you. So to torque it to 175 foot pounds, what does a person do? You end up taking either a, a big bar, sticking it through your lug studs here, and as you rotate to tighten it down, it's going to wedge that bar against the ground and you can really put the torque down on it. Or the other option would be, uh, once I get my brake rotor and my caliper on and everything like that, if you've got an extra person around, you can have them jump in, hold the brake, which will squeeze the caliper, the caliper and squeeze the brake rotor, then you can tighten it down. Or the next option would be, put the tire back on it uh, temporarily, set it down on the ground so the tire holds the hub in place, tighten that down to your 175 foot pounds, then you're going to jack it back up, take the tire back off, and put the cotter pin and put that little castellated uh, lock nut on and the cotter pin in place. Well, being that I'm flying solo out here, I think my option is going to be is put the tire back on and tighten it up that way. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and snug this up real well and go ahead and put my brake disc back on, all that good fun stuff. So, uh, I'm going to get my torque wrench. These back here are 75 foot pounds. This big old monster, 175 pounds. That's right, 175. 175 foot pounds here, 75 pounds on those. On the surface of the bearing where the rotor slides on right here, make sure you clean out the junk out of here and take you some grease and just put a real light coat right there to put it around the hub here. What this is going to do for you is going to help prevent any kind of water intrusion getting back there and making it seize up on there. Kind of save you some. Uh, issues later if you ever have to remove that okay also i want to point out something else look at my caliper see how it's setting i got no weight on my line whatsoever so i said on my springs here what you don't want to do is let your 
caliper just hang by your brake line. It's really hard on the brake line. You don't want to do that. It could cause you dangerous issues later on. If you don't have a way to set it like this, I'm telling you people, one of my favorite tools comes in every pair of shoe. Well, I can say every pair of shoes. Every shoe strings. I just go with that. Shoe strings are awesome. Tie your shoe string around here. Tie it up to the shock tower. It'll hang it up there, no problem. So whenever you wear out a pair of shoes, get those shoe strings, man. They're awesome. Okay, now that I've got the axle nut on, which means once you put the axle nut on, you've got the hub and everything, and what's done, this axle here, it's pulled the axle that way. Remember a moment ago, we just had a very little bit of play in here. Now that the axle's been pulled that way from putting the nut on and snugging it up real good, I've got about, I've got about an eighth of an inch of play or so, which I'm comfortable with that. I'm good with that. Because what you don't want, you don't want to force it against the side over here too hard because it's kind of like one of those thrust washer issues or thrust bearing, people know what that is. It's where you get side loading on a bearing, crank, whatever, maybe riding where. But you don't, I don't mind it riding against the clamps because that's not going to hurt anything, but I don't want it riding against the casing here because that will cause more wear issues and stuff like that. So I've got about eighth of inch play, so what I do is I take this, push it against the clamps, and now I'm gonna put my cover back on, button this here up. Yay, it's torqued down. I got lucky, Dad pulled it about the right time and he held the brake for me, saved me a step. All right, take your little castle thingy, make sure it lines up with where your key goes through. And I know I should be using a new key and I still don't have a new one, so I guess what, this is still good. Push that through, hammer time. Anyway, you get the point, knock it through. Then we take the bendies back. But I'm going to give power pliers and I'll bend those. You'll see what then will be done. Can we bend your key back? Bend it back just enough that if you wasn't have to take it off again, you've got a way to grab hold of it with pliers because it's inside the hub assembly right here. It's not going to hit anything besides it rotates with the tire. So you're good to go. Just bend it back far enough. It's not going to hit anything, but leave enough sticking out. But you have to take it if you have to take it off later, which if you're, if you're running a Jeep, you're going to have to. So deal with it. End up bending that back. So there you go. We done. I'm going to put the tire back on. So did you learn a little something from the video? If so, hit that thumbs up down below. Like I said in the beginning, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Feel free to leave those questions or comments down below. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. And most of all, I want you out there in YouTube land to have a great day. Peace out. Later, y'all.